Welcome back to The Glow Life. I'm your host, Maria Marlowe, and today we're talking about how to nourish your skin from within with celebrity makeup artist, Wendy Rowe. Most makeup artists focus really just on the outside, but what I love about Wendy's approach is she knows that good skin really starts on the inside. A few years ago, she wrote a book called Eat Beautiful, Food and Recipes to Nourish Your Skin from the Inside Out. And if you guys know me, you know that is exactly up my alley. So I had to have her on the show to share her insights. Wendy has been a makeup artist for over 25 years. She has multiple decades of experience, and she's worked with some of the biggest names, both in terms of makeup brand names. She's worked on sets for magazines like Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, Allure, and so many more. Her celebrity clients include the likes of Sienna Miller, Victoria Beckham, and more. This episode is brought to you by The Clear Skin Plan, my 90-day program and meal plan to clear your skin from within naturally through dietary and lifestyle changes. Skin issues like acne are not only skin deep. They start deep within with internal inflammation and imbalances. The only way to clear your skin is to address those underlying root causes, and the Clear Skin Plan will help you do just that. With the plan, you'll discover the potential underlying root causes of your breakouts and how to remedy them through dietary and lifestyle changes. You'll also get over 100 delicious skin clearing recipes which you can mix and match or follow the weekly sample meal plans with shopping lists. This program is science-backed, dermatologist approved, and doctor recommended. To get it, head to mariamarlo.com forward slash clear dash skin dash plan. Wendy, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. So what I love about your approach, you're a makeup artist, but you don't just stop, you know, at the skin and you have a whole philosophy around really nourishing yourself in order to get the best skin. So it's not just topicals, it's what you do internally. So can you share a little bit about your inspiration for your book, Eat Beautiful? And and how did you come to, you know, figure out that it's really what's going on the inside that matters? Well, the reason why I done the book was a lot of people, you know, I used to do lots of interviews and people asked me about my routine and what I do in the day and, you know, skincare and, and my regime. You know, then they came to me with these book offers and I was like, well, I don't want to do a makeup book because for me, people watch makeup on videos now. I feel like a makeup book is old fashioned. I mean, listen, there's great books that I've seen along the way, which I love, but they were then and times have changed and you need to move with what's going on. I have always cared about what I ate. I've always worked out. I think fundamentally that will always give you great skin. And if you have a great starting point, the makeup is easy. So that's what I wanted to concentrate on. And also, it's a little bit of an apothecary take on it, because there's lots of things that you're probably your grandmother would have done, you know, back in the day before we all had doctors and whatever, that, you know, like home remedies that people would have known about. You know, I mean, a lot of the, the actual commercial drugs are, come from plants, You know, so there's a lot of healing within plants and stuff that you don't know about. So I was just trying to kind of re-educate people. Also, it was a book for me just to remember because I'm not massively academic and I do forget stuff a lot. I'm very dyslexic and it was kind of like a way of being concise and putting everything I needed to remember because, you know, sometimes you get them, you know, Someone tells you something or you read a self-help book or something and you think, yeah, my God, that's it. And then you don't listen to it for a while and you completely forget it. And it's a bit like, why can I not retain that information? (laughs) You know, like something you should do that you just keep on forgetting to do, which is very simple. So it's kind of a way of putting all of that together. Also, a little bit about my life and some stories about traveling and stuff like that. And all the things I've picked up along the way, you know, as a makeup artist, You're expected to be like a paramedic, doctor, a therapist. And that's all actually even before you become to be a makeup artist, you know. 
because you have to understand the person you have to care about the person you you know and you can make them look good but you need to make them feel good so it comes hand in hand and it's funny I was thinking about this the other day and I thought you know I feel good about myself when I work out and I eat well and if I feel good then I automatically look good and it just comes hand in hand so I'm just kind of giving everybody a bit of a head start before you even get into the makeup thing and then that makes it much simpler Agreed. Yeah. When you feel good, you, you automatically look good and you just sort of glow. You have that glow. Yeah. So, so spend any money really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so are there any foods in particular, like what do you consider superfoods for skin? I mean, obviously all the greens, the dark greens, you know, I always say eat like the rainbow, you know, try and make your food colorful, try and cook it from basic. I know sometimes people don't have that option, you know, if you've got kids and you're racing around, but try and have things that are not already made because you don't know what when it goes in it, you know, because they can put sugar in and stuff like that. And it's probably why you like it, right? <laughs> uh, it's a massive, like, an addiction. But, you know, like red cabbage, you know, that's something that people always forget and, you know, all these things with, like, strong colours and are really good for you. Like, red cabbage, that's got vitamin C. Now, you wouldn't think about that, but it's really, really good for your skin. And, you know, and it's, like, repairs and stuff like that. So that's something that people don't really think about. But if you think about it, the strong colours get a, a, a lot that will help you loads. You know, it's greens, it's got iron, you know, I mean, orange with vitamin C. So, you know, try and think about bright colors and I say eat like the rainbow. Yeah, I love that. That's what I always say as well. The dark leafy greens are amazing. The orange foods are high in vitamin A, which is good for keeping your skin clear. So eat the rainbow, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And then you also talk about some golden rules. So what are some of your golden rules? Well, I mean, I always say this, um, and which is true. It's just like, Always take your makeup off. There's nothing, and listen, I know like the odd time, listen, no one's perfect. And this is what I want to say about my book. No one is perfect. I'm not perfect. I mean, surprisingly. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, no one's perfect. And I think if you if you think that you are, you know, you're going to be perfect, you're, you're head, heading for a fall. So don't, you know, don't be too hard. And, you know, but take off your makeup. It's a real necessity. I would say, listen, every now and then it's okay. It's not, you're not going to have really damaged skin afterwards or, you know, it's okay. But like try and think of that as one of those roles that you try not to forget. It becomes like um, a habit. You know, you don't feel clean until you've taken it off to go to bed. I would say I would only cleanse at night. Do not cleanse in the morning. Because if you cleanse in the morning, you strip away. Well, bear in mind, you should have had clean skin when you went to bed. That's all. <laughs> but you will strip away all the natural oils. The skin needs time to rebalance. And the best time that you can do that is at night when there's no pollution around, there's nothing else going on. You're just in your bedroom. And unless, I don't know, unless um, you're smoking in bed or something, there's nothing going to, you know, nothing. there's no outside influence. So it should be clean. And so it will give you time to rebalance your skin. And then in the morning, just water, just, just like liven your skin up, just with cold water and a toner. And a moisturizer is about protecting. It only protects you from the outside element. It will nourish slightly, but it's, it's all in fight mode. So it's a bit like chow, 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 chow. sun, pollution, this, that. So really that's what that moisturizer does. At night is when you can nourish. You can add extra at night because it's got no other outside influences having a go at it, you know? So I suppose there are a couple of my golden rules. Yeah, no, it makes sense. And I'm on board. I do all the things that you say. I'd never wash in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, always, always take my makeup off at night. And yeah, I, it's funny sometimes because 
people are sometimes conditioned to think like, oh, you have to wash your face in the morning. But yeah, you brought up a good point. There's nothing, there's nothing there. Like there's nothing yeah. happening overnight. That's like dirtying your face. Yeah. 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 And um, in the book, you also talk about beauty betrayers and then beauty saviors. So what are some, some of those? <laughs> beauty saviors, I would say on a food level, I would say like, you know, fish for me. You know, I mean, I know everyone's got this whole thing about, you know, mercury and the seas polluted and stuff like that. Listen, I mean, there's always going to be something, right? But they do have natural oils and they are good for you. So, you know, it's an internal oil. Also, you can get that from avocado because I know everyone will be going, yeah, but you can get that from avocado and you can get that. <laughs> you can, but I mean, I like fish. So, you know, that for me is a saviour. I think moisturiser is a saviour, is a protector. Betrayers, what did I say? Tell me. <laughs> Because it was four or five years ago when I wrote this book. Uh, yeah. I no, it's a reference to, do you know what I mean? Because I just can't, okay. can't retain stuff. It's okay. I mean, I imagine like probably processed packaged foods. Oh, yes. Okay. Are, that's, like, yeah, sorry. That, yeah. Not, yeah. They are like. Uh, no, betrayer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because like I said before, you know, they always got secret stuff in them. Yeah. Like, gum stuff or you know food coloring or sugar you know and yeah so it might look healthy but it's not you know you really only need to look and if you've got time to check out everything on the back of a packet of stuff then good luck listen if you pick up a bit of broccoli you know what that is right yeah, yeah you know you just that you don't need to you know worry too much and unless you're a nutritionist good luck with that it's the same thing with skincare you know Sometimes it's very complicated, even for me, for a makeup artist, to understand what all these ingredients do. I'm not a chemist, you know. I just know what works and what doesn't work. And I always think, keep it simple. Don't overthink it. I mean, that's note to self, too, actually. Because, you know, we all do try and overthink it. Just try and keep it simple. Try and keep it fun. Try and keep it easy, because then you're not going to make too many mistakes. Was when you were writing the book, was there anything that was like really surprising to you, or you think that would be surprising to readers? Like, you know, that I think, I think the herbal pharmacy, you know, when I done a herbal pharmacy, I mean, I really enjoyed doing that. I really enjoyed researching it because it made me learn stuff. And in London, there's a place called um, the Chelsea Physics Garden. And I went and done a apothecary course there. And it's so interesting where things came from naturally and um, what they used before. That I love stuff like that. You know, I just think they're great, you know, like nuggets of information. If you can retain them, I still <laughs> look at my book and go, what was that? <laughs> Are there any herbs or plants in particular that you remember that were, you know, especially beneficial or you maybe well, wanted to use more of well there well for one there's willow and willow is aspirin obviously we're not going to be able to re retract that from the plant and stuff like that but you know nettle is so good you know a lot of teas like calendula which is um, marigold um a lot of them good for hormones and stuff like that and um you know getting rid of fluid retention water retention, all things like that. I, I love all these things, you know, because as women, we all tend to suffer from emotional ups and downs and water retention and anything like that. And if you can, you know, um, get rid of it naturally, it's always better, right? Definitely. And I love tea. It's like when people come over my house, I have like a whole closet of like all my loose leaf teas, all my Lovely. tea bags. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. Because I do, I think teas are so medicinal. They're delicious. They're medicinal. They offer so many benefits. Big fan of the nettle tea as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, really good for hair, skin, and nails. Yeah, I mean, I I also, I mean, I love ginger. So anything mm. ginger in water or mint tea. You know, ginger is great for the stomach digestion. You know, I I love I like fresh mint teas. It kind of, it reminds me. I mean, obviously things 
that I like remind me of certain things like you know it's very kind of North African uh, and I love that and it is so fresh but you've you know if you're not someone that's into drinking water that kind of thing is very easy to do Mm -hmm. and you know it's kind of tasty but without being any calories anything but only beneficial yeah and the fresh herb tea is like the mint tea are really good I made a sage tea last night uh, which is yeah good for good for your brain and, and memory and uh yeah really good you should be all to having that by the chocolate <laughs> <laughs> maybe I should have that <laughs> and um what about some like homemade like mask recipes or or anything like that do you have any favorites well, you know, I always think a rose water is very easy to make. You know, I mean, obviously here in the UK, roses are kind of a thing. You know, um, we used to have a rose garden when I was a kid. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it wasn't a huge rose garden. Uh, it was, you know, just a regular a garden with roses because everyone had roses, you know. And yeah. uh, and it's just something very easy you can do. It's so calming for the skin. It's gentle. Anybody could use it. I would never have a problem with anybody using it. You know, I wouldn't think, oh, it will flare their their skin up or it will dry out. It's just very kind. Um, The spirulina mask, I mean, I know it's probably something you wouldn't have in your cupboard, but, you know, it's really worth getting, like, the spirulina because it's an antioxidant. It really um, stores, like, the, the skin and the health of the skin and you know what the the one thing about the spirulina is because you can make a lot of home masks but they might be like clay based or, or over moisturized this one's super kind as well so it doesn't matter what's going on you know what I mean this is that's why I always try and put a win-win for everybody you know because if you put something with clay in it, well, it will dry and it will pull out stuff. But the spirulina is restoring uh, and moisturising without it being over-moisturising, without it being over-drying. It's just a lovely mask. It's smelly, but, you know. (laughs) Yeah. And what about honey, honey for the skin? Yeah, I mean, honey, but, you know, you need to use uh, Manuka honey, which is expensive, you know, and that's got propolis in it. And propolis is uh, antibacterial, you know, and that's why people say, you know, have a spoonful of honey if you've got a sore throat and stuff like that, because it's a natural antibacteria. Um, A lot of um, creams uh, have um, propolis in, which is a, a natural antibacteria. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's good. That's moisturising. That's calming. I mean, there's lots of alternatives. Uh, but I mean, I like that too, you know? Yeah. With milk, because, you know, that's good as well. I mean, that's what uh, Cleopatra used to bathe in, the ass's milk. <laughs> <laughs> it was good, good enough for her. It's good enough yeah, for us. <laughs> Okay. And so like, you're, you're one of the top makeup artists, you're doing, you know, all these top faces and celebrities and models. So do you have any tips for, for the rest of us in terms of makeup, like any just like quick tips that would, would be helpful? I would say what I know from the years of doing makeup, you have to prep your skin first, right? So I would say you need a very light cleanser and toner just to get it in a great place nothing that strips the skin super light like a a very very light lotion and then a kind of an in-between moisturizer more of a lotion that will help you with everything else you're going to do so that's what i'd say i would say masks are always good but don't use a mask that has too much product on it because it will roll the the makeup so it needs to have the right amount it's a real fine line the gel masks are better actually if you're going to do makeup and um what else would I say I mean they're the things that I always do uh, and makes everyone feel good before I've even started I mean always put on a lip balm before you even start. So you can kind of do all your face and this is nourishing at the same time. It's mm-hmm. just a little, you know, because lips get dry and that's just the way it is. So you might as well start off with hydrating them first thing 
Mm-hmm. Just do that. I don't want to give you too much stuff because it shouldn't be that complicated. But, um, you know, and take your time with makeup. You know, I mean, you need the right products to do it quickly. And I think, you know, most people are still kind of navigating that path. I mean, I have to figure it out quickly because I know that I don't have much time. But if you get your skin in the good place to start with, the mistakes are minimal. Also, if you make a mistake, it's okay because I make loads of mistakes. And, you know, and then I change it and it's okay. (laughs) Yeah. It doesn't mean I'm rubbish. (laughs) You know, so, you know, because I know sometimes people do their makeup and they go, oh, my God, it's gone wrong or it doesn't suit me. It might not suit you, so just change the shape slightly. You know, you can always adapt. I mean, I always say I'm a good decorator. And I mean, as in, like, when I make a cake, I'm not very good at baking, but I can decorate it amazingly. So it's a bit like once you've got your foundation, the decoration, you can always move around slightly. It's never in stone. Don't think it needs to be exactly the same as someone else's because everyone's face is different. And so you will suit something slightly different to someone else. And it might be really minimal, but don't worry about that. You know, just do what works for you. Yeah. And you have plenty of YouTube videos uh, and also on your site, you know, so some yeah. tutorials. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I say, you know, so, you know, I'll give you some tips beforehand because, you know, there's things I just know over the years. It's a bit like, you know, look at your face first and, and try and keep it simple. I'll just give you the the failures that I've had. So you won't, well, at least you're aware of them before you start. Is that, is that, I mean, because I think makeup's like cooking, because you have all the ingredients. Listen, that dish will never turn out the same twice, you know, unless you're like Gordon Ramsay or someone like that. So for normal people, <laughs> it's not going to, and it's okay. And that's the same with makeup. It will never be the same. You can kind of try and hit it that's something that works good, but you know. Faces change, you know, sometimes it might be a bit rounder, sometimes you might be a bit skinnier, sometimes you might have had a good day and look amazing, sometimes you might not have had such a good day. So you kind of have to just work with what is going on. And like, you know, so I say no dish will ever be the same, no face is ever the same. So, you know, just try and tailor it for yourself and don't be too harsh. I'm perfect. You no, know, it doesn't need to be that perfect. You're not, you know, you're not doing a beauty campaign. You know, no one's going to see their mouth the size of a TV screen. It's okay. You know, and also when you do makeup, when you do your own makeup, no one is going to be that close to you. No one's going to be like, you know, like, I don't know how far that is. I'll just measure that. Um, you know, like 10 inches. They're not going to be that close. No, you know, they're always going to be slightly far away because otherwise it's a personal space thing. Well, at the moment, two metres, isn't it? Or, or yeah. is it not anymore? I don't even know. Uh, but, you know, no one's that, and never that close to you. And also I think about when you do your makeup, Look at it as a whole face because I do see these things on Instagram and they do an eye, mm-hmm. which looks amazing. But let's see both eyes with the face because it might look a bit like, whoa, that's a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's a bit like, you know, don't just concentrate on the eye, just kind of move it back and try and see it as an overall picture. Yeah. And do you have any tips? Like I'm thinking like, okay, we have you here, you know, how do we learn from this, from this Come expert? On, <laughs> um, so maybe I'll, I'll like say some like common, um, you know, things, and then you can share like, what are the best things to do for them? So like, for example, okay. under, under eye circles, like dark under eye circles, like any tips for that? How to? Okay. So everyone thinks they've got dark under eye circles. This is a thing, right? uh-huh. uh, you know, if, it's, it's normally under eye circles are normally are like like a, a blue tone and so you just need a concealer that doesn't look your color it needs to be slightly orange but still uh, of your skin tone but much more oranger nars do a great one i think mac do a great one you know it, they call them eye brighteners and you might go well that's not you know it doesn't look like my skin tone but trust me on the colour wheel, which is a whole other thing, which, you know, it's the opposite. So it counteracts. 
So just know that something with a little bit of orange in is going to get rid of blue. That's all you need to know. You don't even need to know about the colour wheel. It's boring. <laughs> <laughs> so just using that, that like an orange-based concealer and that will help mask the blue. Yeah, yeah. it's not bright orange though. Let's not get into like, it's not like a... Uh, orange it's yeah. got a, a, an undertone of orange yeah so don't, you know I mean when you're darker skin tone you know like Indian or something you might need to go much more orange and that mm-hmm. seems very weird but actually it will counteract because a lot of Indian skin tones that tend to be darker around the eye and around the mouth mm-hmm. so it's a good balance to knock that out with an orange so that's when you would go brighter. But for a lighter skin tone, no. Got it. I mean, I think um, Charlotte Tilbury does um, does a, um, an orange that is, really looks like a blush. But if uh-huh. you're dark, it really works. Got you it. Need to know, you, know, you, need to know, you need to know that. If you didn't know, you'd be like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> and, and what about for a blemish, like covering up a pimple or something? Okay, so the thing is with that is... If you can get your skin in a good place, that's why I say you use a really light cleanser, you know, but nothing that you have to wash off with a sink. You know, it's not like a, a full on, like a really like lotion. Mm-hmm. And so you rub it in. And what I do is I rub it round in circles, any dryness, because what happens with a blemish is you get like, you might get dry skin around it. And if you can seal it and you put concealer on it, it just goes, oh, my God, you've got a blemish. And all this dry skin really stands out now. So you just try and get rid of all that first. <laughs> Give yourself a chance. And what people's common mistake is, they might have some blemishes, and what they'll do is they'll put on their full coverage because they want to cover, like, say, their cheeks or, or their chin. They put on a full coverage everywhere, right, which is not the way to do it is to put on a lighter coverage um, foundation so you can still feel the skin you can still see the skin because it doesn't look like you've got bad skin and then what you do is you go in with a concealer um, probably like a liquid or a cream and then you just tap it onto the onto the area and then do it a little bit round the area and then blend it out. And if you if you find that it's not staying because it's raised, then get a little tiny brush and just paint it in. Listen, it's the painstaking, but it works and it looks like you don't have bad skin. And you need to powder it because anything that sticks out will catch light. So if you put powder on it, it will flatten it and then you won't look like you've got bumps. Great tip. Great tip. <laughs> I'm trying to think, what else do people usually... I'll tell you what other thing people, um, are what I mean, a lot of my friends always ask me, is, you know, mascara. You know, I don't want it to move. And, um, you know, sometimes people get mascara under their eyes after a little while. And I would say my best tip for that is use a waterproof mascara on the bottom lashes, for sure. I mean, I always do on all my clients, and they always go, oh, Wendy, it's so hard to get off. And I'm like, yeah, but you need to... Use oil, you know, like mean baby oil, but you know, like a, a cleanser with an, with oil and water, you know, like the eye makeup removers. Um, Longcom do a great one, a uh, Vichy, and so if you use that, because I I need things that perform. So when I leave someone and they go on the red carpet, and then I'm lit, like I'm, I'm done, I can't do anything now, and so I need to make sure whatever happens that they're not going to have mascara down their face because that would be like, oh, my God. And of course, no one tells you until you go into the bathroom. You're like, <laughs> mascara down here. The other thing is always powder under the lashes and don't take your concealer too too high under the eye because if, it, if it's it will be greasy because you do produce oil here. So mm-hmm. try and not take it right up to the lash line if you're going to conceal. Try and... You will always have a natural shadow there anyway. So it will always be slightly, I mean, not, we're talking slightly darker, just a tiny shadow because the eyelashes give you shadow, right? Mm-hmm. It's just the way it is. Yeah. So you don't need to take concealer right up to there. Also, you might have an art, you know, you might have like, a, I don't know, a smoky eye and done some stuff. So don't take it right up and make sure this is quite powdered. Overpowder it and you will be good. Great tips. Okay, I'm going to try that. Try that next time. <laughs> yeah. um, what other things can I think about? Oh, doing a quick lip. 
you know, I mean, I know this from doing shows and you're like rushed and people have come in from other shows and you're like, oh my God, I've got to get this makeup on and maybe it's a red lip. You're like, oh my God. So what I intend to do is I'll do the bottom lip and then I get them to press their mouth together and that will give you a natural where it should naturally uh, fall. You know, and then you just need to just fill it in slightly. But it's a quick way to do a red lip if you're in a rush. Mm. Yeah, red lips, I feel like, are always tricky. Yeah, because you can spend age. I mean, you know, when I'm doing my own, I could spend age. Not that I would do it very often. Spend uh-huh. age going right. Oh, I don't know. I mean, you know, sometimes it's best not to think about it too much. And, but, you know, um, <laughs> but we do. Yeah. Because, um, you know. That's what we like to do. Um, <laughs> but that's okay, you know. I would say don't wear makeup all the time. Give your skin a chance to breathe. I wouldn't necessarily, uh, you know, I know some people like to do this, but keep your makeup super minimal when you're working out because the pores open mm-hmm. and it's taking, well, you know, just give yourself a chance, give yourself a break. You know, I think sometimes I always think, you know, the most modern makeup is the less makeup you know if you want to be fashion then that actually is quite minimal makeup and if you looked after your skin you'd feel okay about that and maybe it's just an eyebrow or something you know Mm -hmm. um you know that's the most modern makeup because people go i want it to make it look modern i think well that's not a lot of makeup but that's cool because it comes with everything else you know the attitude yeah what you're wearing because people don't just look at your face they look at everything Mm-hmm. And, and half the time, once you're talking to someone, it doesn't really matter anymore. So always having a nice time. Yeah. So with makeup, you know, sometimes I find things in my bag and I'm like, wow, I've had this for a really, really long time. <laughs> so when when are we supposed to like get rid of this stuff? Like, is there an expiration? Uh, yeah, but they say two years. Okay. From opening. Yeah. Okay. That's two not bad. Yeah. Two years from opening. Um, I mean... Listen, if you love something, just carry it. <laughs> Look, lipstick or whatever, you know. I think foundations, that's a little bit more tricky. They oxidise. Um, so they probably won't perform in the way that you expected them to perform. Mm-hmm. And that's because they've kind of turned, separated. So, you know, if you want to do wear a 24-hour foundation, not that I would uh, say that was a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think anything that stays on for 24 hours is a little bit scary uh-huh. uh, and your skin breathes so you know you want some you know I don't think that's great but um you know if something's not performing in the way that you want it to it's probably gone off and that's just a simple way uh, apart from the fact you can probably smell it but if you really love it and it's a, like a powder eyeshadow or something you know as long as you're not, as long as, as long as it's not doing anything to you, you know, you're not getting a red eye or something, you know, then, you know, it's time to say goodbye. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was lovely. But yeah. I didn't want to hunt for the same thing because obviously that will be discontinued. Or I know. <laughs> and you want to hunt for the same thing. And I was a bit like, you know, why did they discontinue the most favourite thing I ever liked? Because that's what makeup companies do. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um do you have any favorite like more natural makeup brands because I know those are kind of becoming more popular but it is like harder to find you know products that act the same as like the more traditional products so I'm just curious because I'm sure you get you test so many yeah things. I mean I feel, uh, you can't say behind me because I put it all down on the floor but this is fun <laughs> boxes this is stuff that I get sent all the time I mean I really like RMS Rosemary mm-hmm. Swift I like her range. I think it's great. I think her products are really good. They're quite natural, as in natural in finish, mm-hmm. and uh, and they are completely uh, natural in uh, formulation. So I think she's great. Um, who else? All right, Tower Twenty Eight. I like that. Uh, that's a nice natural range, and you know uh, the story behind that is. Um, The girl had eczema and couldn't use makeup and that worked for her. So I really do like that. I'm just looking around my room because, of course, it's a bit like you ask me a question like this and I can't. (laughs) No, it's okay. Um, It just goes out of my mind, you know. Um, I mean, Jones Road, they're doing some great stuff. Do you know that, Jones Road? Mm -mm. Um, It's Bobby Brown. Um, It's her new line and it's called Jones Road and that's really lovely. 
who else? Victoria Beckham on a more expensive price point. I think that's really nice and natural. And these are all natural. I think Hourglass, I really love. Oh, I, I do like Hourglass. Yeah, they're, they're a great brand. And I can't think of anyone else. It's a bit rubbish of me. But if they look at my blog, I write everything down. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, and you'll see because you know I, I'm I you know I've worked with the Soil Association in the UK for quite a long time, and they have like brands that are doing well. And so I you know if you just put in like um, clean makeup or organic makeup or something like that, then all the pages that come up. Oh, cool! Now I have to remember everything. <laughs> <laughs> Much easier. Yeah. Well, cool. Thank you so much, Wendy. This has been so fun. And I'm glad you enjoyed. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. And for any of our listeners that want to hear more from Wendy, you can go to her website. It's wendyrow.com. And I'll put that link in the show notes. Uh, You could also check out her book, Eat Beautiful, which is available on Amazon and wherever books are sold. And I know you have a new one in the pipeline that you can't talk about, but we'll be on the we'll be on the lookout (laughs) for that as well. Uh, and yeah, and check out my YouTube. Yeah, uh, because yeah, um, it's not. It doesn't. It, well, you won't be on there for hours. I will give you tips at the beginning, and it'd be great to see what other people do with um, the looks that I've done. Yeah, definitely. I, I need to try some of them actually. Yeah, I'd <laughs> like to see what you look like. So. <laughs> I mean, some of them are fun. Some of them are more, you know, wearable. Uh, yeah, I try and keep it easy. You know. Yeah, that's what I like. Easy. Yeah, yeah, we all like that, don't we? It's all in a rush. (laughs) Cool. Thank you so much, Wendy. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to The Glow Life. If you have questions, comments, or topic ideas, head over to Instagram at Maria Marlowe and drop me a line. If you enjoy the show and think others might too, Please share this episode and take just one minute to leave a review on iTunes, Amazon Music, Spotify, or whatever platform you listen on. Your review truly helps the podcast grow, reach more people, and bring on incredible guests. As a thank you, send a screenshot of the review to info at mariamarlo.com and you'll get a free copy of Glow From Within, a three-day reset plan to nourish your body, calm your mind, and ignite your soul. It comes with a delicious three-day meal plan to help you bring out your inner glow. P.S. You can listen to the podcast on iTunes, Amazon Music, Audible, Spotify, and even watch the video interviews on YouTube.